Hello guys, welcome to Physics Grab. In this video, we are, we are going to learn about something known as conservation laws and this is going to be an introduction to this particular concept. So let us begin. So, so far we have seen that to specify the state of the system, so to specify the state of the system, we need to know two S quantities which are the generalized position and generalized velocities. So we need to know 2s quantities which are the generalized velocities and sorry generalized position and the generalized velocity where i goes from 1 to s where s is the number of degrees of freedom all right so to specify the state of the system we need to know qi and qi dot as a function of time we need to know how they vary as time uh, with respect to time as a function of t right and then we have our euler lagrange equations which are for each i we have d by dt do l by do q i dot minus do l by do q i equal to 0 right we have uh, how many such equation we have s equations right corresponding to every i now solving these solving these equations involves integration and it gives 2s number of constants of integration okay and let's call these constants okay let's call these as c1 c2 up to c2s okay now before we proceed any further let us consider an example okay so we're considering an example and the example is a very well known mechanical system in mechanics and that is nothing but the harmonic oscillator this comes up in many different places in physics and it's a very important mechanical problem and we'll be of course revisiting this in more greater detail as we move forward but for now just to understand uh, what we are going to do we we will proceed with an example and i am going to choose the harmonic oscillator because of its simple form so uh, a good example for a harmonic oscillator is a spring mass system of spring constant k and mass m which is allowed to move in the x direction okay now to represent or to completely know the state of this system, we need to know x of t and x dot of t. And s for this system, that is the degree of freedom, is going to be 1. Okay. And as we know, this forms a closed system and the Lagrangian for a closed system will have the form t minus u, where t is the kinetic energy and u is the potential energy, which as we know is half m x dot square plus half uh, so so this is minus u so this is minus minus half k x square right so this is the Lagrangian for a harmonic oscillator and the Euler Lagrange equations equation here since s is 1 we'll have only one equation will give us d by dt of do l by do x dot minus do l by do x equal to 0 which gives d by dt of uh, 
12 by 2x dot will give us uh, mx double dot minus do l by do x is going to be just kx and this minus sign is going to cancel with this minus sign so we'll get plus kx equal to 0 and therefore we'll get x double dot equal to minus k by m x and we are going to call this k by m as omega square where omega is as we will see later on is called the characteristic frequency of the harmonic oscillator or the resonance frequency so therefore we have the relation or the equation of motion which is given by x double dot is minus omega square x so as we know this is a second order differential equation and the solution to this equation after we integrate we will get it as x equal to some amplitude constant c1 I'm going to call it as c1 sine omega t plus c2 all right here c1 represents the amplitude and c2 represents the phase so this is the amplitude this is the phase so this is the general solution okay so let us see uh, similarly if we differentiate this we'll get the corresponding equation for x dot which is uh, omega c1 cos omega t plus c2 okay so we have the equation for x and we have the equation for x dot so this is actually x of t and x dot of t so we have completely specified the state of the system provided we know c1 and c2 okay so now uh, let us uh, do some observation let us stare at these and um, come up with some observation so note okay first of all c1 and c2 are determined by the initial conditions c1 and c2 are determined by the initial conditions okay also there are two s in this case s is equal to one so there are two s will be equal to two here constants of integration okay so there are two s in this case equal to two because s is equal to one so so many constants of integration namely c1 and c2 right also notice that l is independent of time this has a very uh, important consequence because this implies that the equation of motion so we get the equation of motion from the form of the Lagrangian and since Lagrangian is independent of time our equation of motion in this case it is given by x double dot equal to minus omega square x this is not explicitly dependent on time so this is not explicitly dependent on time as we see there is no t in this equation and therefore this equation is not explicitly dependent on time all right so this implies what is the consequence of this so this implies it doesn't matter what origin you choose in the time axis right so let me just write that down first and i'll explain it in more detail so this implies change in origin of time so if we define a new time variable as equal to t minus t naught 
this doesn't change the equation of motion so this doesn't change the equation of motion right because ultimately that is what we are interested in we are we need to know what is the equation of motion once we know the equation of motion we can of course calculate rest of the things like x of t x dot of t and so on right okay so now if you look at the uh, these equations right if you look at this equation if you consider the equation for x of t so x of t is given by uh, c1 sin omega t plus c2 right but i can write c2 as omega times minus t naught correct so omega is fixed by choosing but by choosing a particular t naught or by varying t naught i can get to any value of c2 okay so let me just write it in that form over here and we will get c1 sin omega t minus omega t naught or in other words this is equal to x of uh, t is equal to c1 sin omega t minus t naught okay so what what does this mean so this i can write it as some uh, so this one i can write it as x of t dash so this is another way of uh, looking at it that is uh, this particular equation can be uh, seen as a shift in the time origin okay so this can be viewed alternatively as a shift in origin of time with zero phase which is exactly what we have here because the equation of motion will not care whether you represent the final x of t as some omega t plus some phase or whether you re uh, represent it as some x of t dash with zero phase both are both will give you the exact same type of motion okay so both of these are the exact same equation only thing is that i am re representing c2 as omega times minus t naught which has the consequence or which uh, which uh, makes our equation look as if we have translated our origin in the time axis okay so this c2 can just be thought of as an uh, additional uh, time component okay so what i mean is that so we have these equations which tell us x and x dot as a function of time c1 and c2 right so we have here so we have x of t sorry uh, x is a function of t c1 and c2 x dot is a function of t c1 and c2 but we saw that this can be viewed as if or by making c2 as minus omega times t naught this can be viewed as an equation with zero phase but shifted in the time axis or it can be written as a function of t minus t naught 
c1 and this can be similarly written as a function of t minus t0 and c1 right so we will have two uh, equations correct and from these two equations we can so from these two equations we can eliminate t minus t not so what i mean by that is that we have x equal to c1 sin omega t minus t not and x dot equal to c1 times omega cos omega t minus t not right then how do we write c1 as so if i divide this equation i will have x by x dot equal to tan of omega t minus t not correct this means omega t minus t not is equal to tan inverse of x by x dot right so this implies i can write c1 as x by sin of omega of t minus t not is nothing but tan inverse of so tan inverse of x by x dot right so we have a relation or the expression for c1 in terms of x and x dot right so we have c1 expressed in functions in as a function of x and x dot correct and if you further notice this particular value that is the c1 c1's value depends only on initial conditions okay so therefore since c1 is constant okay its value is conserved throughout the motion of the system correct because the value of c1 is not going to change as x and x dot changes with with time the value of c1 remains constant or in other words it remains conserved okay so these are some important observations that we have made from an example of the simple harmonic oscillator and now i am going to make some general statements and understand those general statements in terms of this particular example of a harmonic oscillator so in general okay in general we have we know that motion of a mechanical system so motion of a mechanical system is specified is specified by two s quantities by two s quantities namely qi and qi dot where i is ranging from 1 to s and this is the degree of freedom right and we get the equations of motion by integrating the euler lagrange equations v so integrating so integrating the euler lagrange equations results so this results 
in 2s independent constants so all of this c1 to c2s are independent because the value of one of these constants doesn't determine the value of the other all of them are completely determined from the initial conditions and not from each other and therefore they are independent constants right so this this equations result in 2s independent constant these constants are basically the integration constants right and using the integrated relations we can write so using the integrated versions of the euler lagrange equation integrated relations we can write qi as a function of t c1 c2 up till c2s and qi dot as a function of t c1 c2 c2s and that is what these equations represent that is what these two equations represent for our case of harmonic oscillator and in the generalized case this is what we will have how many such equations are there there are two sets of s number of equations okay so there are s number of these pairs so totally 2s relations okay then we noticed that for a closed system since l is independent of time the choice of origin of t will not matter or it will not be seen in the equation of motion okay so the choice of origin of t will not matter okay and that is what we noticed when we did this part okay so this implies we can write one of the 2s constants as an additive time constant which represents the origin in the time axis it's basically saying that we are looking at a problem from a different view wherein we are changing our position of observation in the time axis okay so we will get a new set of relations so from this we go to a new set of relations where all of these qi's and qi dots depend on now t minus t not c1 c2 up till c2s minus 1 similarly qi dot as a function of t minus t not c1 c2 c2s minus 1 and that is exactly what these relations represent so these relations in this case s was s is equal to 1 so 2s minus 1 is also equal to 1 so we we'll, we have x of t as a function of uh, t minus t not and c1 and similarly for x dot of t okay all right so these functions are constants as we have seen over here oh before that okay so now we have two s number of relations okay from these sets of relations we can now eliminate t minus t not and write c1 c2 
dot 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 c two s minus one as a functions function of q i and q i dot. Okay. So after we eliminate this t minus t naught from using these two s number of relations, we can express this c one as a function of q i and q i dot. So here i is going to range. So so this will consist of. So this implies I am saying q1, q2, dot dot dot, qs, comma q1 dot, q2 dot, dot dot dot, qs dot. So this is this is written as a function of all of these variables. Similarly for c2 and c2 s minus one. So this is a function c2 s minus one of Q1, Q2, dot dot dot, Qs, Q1 dot, Q2 dot, dot dot dot, Qs dot. So in our example, that is what we have done here. We are writing C1 as a function of x and as a function of x and x dot. How? We basically write it from by eliminating t minus t naught from these relations. That is what we have done here, and from this we go to this, and that is exactly what I am writing over here also. Okay, so these, okay, these, the left hand side is or are constants. Which are independent and determined from initial conditions. Okay, but our RHS, so RHS. Is a function of q i and q i dot, where this ranges from q one to q s and q one dot to q s dot. Okay, which means these functions are also constants and independent. Okay, so these functions. constants and independent okay so even though the values of qi and qi dot changes these the values of these functions remain a constant because the lhs is constant okay let me represent uh, let me represent these sets of Equations. So sorry, these sets of equations by the number one. Okay, and when I say the functions, so this corresponds to the set of equations from the relations uh, which are numbered by the digit one. Okay. So, so these are all constants for all q i and q i dot. so such functions which remain constant for varying qi and qi dot are called integrals of motion okay so since they remain constant throughout the motion throughout the motion okay they are called integrals of motion right so and we have already seen that c1 to c2 s minus 1 are independent therefore these functions should also be independent so they these functions are independent by independent what do we mean none of these functions can be written in terms of the other functions okay so since they are independent i can define 
other integrals of motion which are linear combinations of this okay but before that let us make note of this important observation so therefore the number of independent integrals of motion for a closed system with s number of degrees of freedom is 2s minus 1 because there are 2s minus 1 number of independent constants and the other constant can be interpreted as change in the origin of time axis okay so there are 2s minus 1 number of independent integrals of motion and by integrals of motion we are referring to the independent set of functions which remain constant throughout the motion or in other words which remain constant while qi and qi dot changes with time okay so moving on we note that we can construct okay other integrals of motion as a linear combination of functions independent functions in the sets of relations given by one okay so this is a straightforward statement which simply means that i can construct some function f dash as some a1 times f1 plus a2 times f2 plus dot 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 a 2s minus 1 times f 2s minus 1 because there are 2s minus 1 independent integrals of motion okay this can also be need not be a linear combination any combination okay it can even be square or cube or as long as these functions remain constant any functions of these constant uh, these functions will also be a constant okay so instead of linear combination uh, integral of motion as any combinations of functions in you know, it means it's not restricted to linear combination any combination in fact okay but we are not interested in all of these integrals of motion because not all of them are important from the perspective of gaining insight into our uh, systems behavior okay so but not all integrals of motion are of equal importance right so then which of these integrals of motion are the ones which are interesting okay so what we can say which will be more clear as I give an example soon. Okay, there are some integrals of motion which which are a consequence of the fundamental property of space and time being homogeneous and isotropic. Okay, so first let me write down a statement and explain it with an example. So there are some integrals of motion which are a consequence okay consequence of the fundamental property of space and time being homogeneous and isotropic all 
All right. So let us understand with an example. So if you consider the in our harmonic oscillator this quantity half mx dot square plus half kx square this will be nothing but half m x dot which was uh, omega times so omega square c1 square cos square omega t minus t naught plus half k times c1 square sin square omega of t minus t naught but we had defined omega square as as um, k by m so this will turn out to be k so this is nothing but half k c1 square into cos square plus sin square which is equal to 1 so this is half k c1 square which is a constant so this particular function is an integral of motion okay and as many of us already know this is nothing but the energy we are going to look at it more closely in the next video that is the conservation of energy but what i wanted to note is that this particular integral of motion is important because this is a consequence of the property of time being homogeneous if time was not homogeneous this particular quantity would not be an integral of motion okay so that is why this is important and in addition to this okay oh, so this will be yeah so this is correct so in addition to this what we have is that uh, such integrals okay so quantities so quantities represented by such integrals of motion are said to be conserved okay also one more reason why these special integrals of motion are important is because they have the common property of being additive okay they have the common property of being additive so what do we mean by this what we mean is that we will consider an example if i have a some if i have some system which are made of particles whose interaction in between them is either zero or negligible okay so negligible interaction then there will be some integrals of motion where if you consider the system as a whole and calculate the integral corresponding integral of motion it will be equal to the sum of the integral of motion for the individual particles so if you consider let's say gas molecules inside some particular volume which are not interacting with each other which will be the case for something known as an ideal gas then the total kinetic energy of all the molecules or the total energy which is given the name internal energy of the gas molecule is nothing but the sum of the individual kinetic energies of each of the molecules and that is what i mean by saying that they have the common property of being additive okay so so that is something that is important to be remembered and in our upcoming videos we will be studying about some important integrals of motion such as energy momentum angular momentum and so on okay so i hope you have understood what has been taught in this video this is just an introduction to the conservation laws when represented in the lagrangian formalism
Okay, so thank you for watching. See you next time.